let's start talking about premolars. Take a look at this picture. Maxillary right first, premolar, mesial view. What do we know about premolars from previous chapters? That this is a premolar and that this would be a first or second maxillary or a mandibular. And is it a mesial or distal view? What are right now the standout characteristics that you see? And the two cusps. Two cusps, yep. Okay, it's two cusps. The facial crest is larger. Facial crest is here. There's two cusps. Okay, so this is one and two. Got a cusp of carabelli or? No, there's no cusp of carabelli. Which tooth has a cusp of carabelli? Oh, wait, this is a premolar. I'm so, okay, never mind, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got two cusps. And look at this. We've got, this is an identifying. Bifurcation. Okay, it, there's mm -hmm. a bifurcation. Which premolar has a bifurcation? First, that, first premolar. That is the maxillary first premolar. It's yes. rare that any other premolar will have a bifurcation. Sometimes you'll see a bifurcation in a mandibular canine, you know, but th this, is, this is characteristic of a maxillary first premolar. The, um, <clears throat> the facial cusp is longer than the lingual cusp. This is the transition tooth from a canine. So the facial is going to look very much like a canine. And the other identifying factor that I'm going to be looking for, and we'll go over this when we're talking about this, this is a groove that goes over the, this is the mesial marginal ridge. And you've got a groove going over the mesial marginal ridge. And it's rare for a groove to go over a ridge. So you've got a mesial marginal ridge. You've got a depression, which you can't really see on this picture, apical to the canine. And it oftentimes will go all the way up the entire root. So these are those characteristics that you're looking for. Steve? Yeah. Is that just for the maxillary first premolar? Or are you talking about all the all premolars for the groove? The maxillary first. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yep, that's the maxillary first. All right, so the way the chapter is, we're going to discuss all the premolars and then we'll be getting into there we go. We'll be getting into um, the specifics. All right, so the learning objectives are there. All right, there are two permanent premolars per quadrant. How many quadrants do you have? You've got four quadrants, so there are a total of eight premolars in the mouth. Two on the maxillary right, two on the maxillary left, two on the mandibular left, and two on the mandibular right. They're considered transitional teeth located immediately distal to the canines and anterior to the permanent molars. So be familiar with that language. They're distal, they're behind the canines, but anterior ahead of the permanent molars. They're transitional teeth. You have a first premolar and a second premolar in each quadrant, four per arch. Your tooth numbers, universal or um, continuous, 4, 5, 12, 13, 20, 21, 28, 29. So let's take tooth number four. Okay, so we're looking at tooth number four. What quadrant is that? One. That's quadrant number one. What tooth in the quadrant is that? Number four. That's number, well, this is four and this is five. If one is the central, one, two, three, four, five. 
So it is the fifth. So it's one five or 1.5. Does that make sense? We're talking about tooth number four. Then for the Palmer, it's going to be the one, two, three, four, five, fifth tooth. Does this make sense to you? Because for the universal, we start counting here. This is one, two, three. That's how we start counting versus the other ones we start counting at the midline. Are we good? Yes. Okay, thank you. What are the functions? Mastication, chewing. All right, the incisors inside as they bite into, they hold, the canines hold and tear. Uh, they help maintain, so this is actual chewing. They help maintain vertical dimension of the face, which all our teeth can do. They assist the canines to shear and cut food. And they support the cheeks and the corner of the mouth. Right, so they tear, they grind, they pierce. They have an occlusal surface. They do not have an incisal edge. And the occlusal surface is called the occlusal table. And that's the occlusal table. So what are the class traits that differ a premolar from an anterior tooth, because this is your first, the anterior te teeth are your incisors and your canines. Now we're going to the posterior. They can have two or three occlusal cusps instead of an incisal edge. They have marginal ridges that are more horizontal because we're getting into occlusal, except for the mandibular first premolar, and we're going to get into that, so don't freak out. The crowns are shorter, but the roots are similar, okay? We're comparing them to the anterior teeth. You've got shorter crowns compared to the anterior, but long roots. The height of contour, the facial height of contour is in the cervical third, and the lingual height of contour is in the middle third. Now, my trivia question is, where is the lingual height of contour in anterior teeth? Anybody, where is your cingulum? I think that's on the cervical third. It's on the cervical third, exactly. So the facial height of contours in the, uh, is in the cervical third, and the lingual height of contour is in the cervical third for anterior teeth, because that's where the cingulum is. But as we go towards the posterior, it, the lingual height of contour is in the middle third. And the contact areas are more cervical. The contact areas on the anterior teeth are more incisal. So the maxillary first and second premolars, as well as the mandibular first and second premolars, okay, can develop from four lobes. Like the anterior teeth, you're going to have three buccal lobes form the buccal cusp and one lingual lobe form that lingual cusp. Now there is a variation of premolars and that's the mandibular second premolar, usually develops from five lobes. Five lobes. You've got three on the buccal and two on the lingual. This is why a bicuspid is not the same as a premolar. A bicuspid means two cusps. So we're not using the term bicuspid anymore. It's an antiquated term 
premolars because it could be two or three cusps, which means it could be four or five developmental lobes. So from the buccal view, all premolars have a pentagon outline. It, they look very similar to a canine from the buccal view. The contact areas are more convex. The distal contact is more cervical, except for the mandibular first premolar. And the mesial cusp ridge is shorter than the distal cusp ridge, except for the first premolar. So a lot of this, what I want you to know is it's going to look like a canine. And the cusp ridge, it's going to be longer on the mesial than it is on the distal. Pentagon in shape. Uh, in shape. So if people um, are missing their canines. What we used to do years ago in dentistry was uh, they, with the missing canine, they'd move that premolar through orthodontics. They'd move everything closer and make it into that second, uh, the first premolar would be into that canine position. And from the facial view, it would look very much the same as a canine. We wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Misty. Yeah. I'm sorry. I think Caitlin's asking if you could let her back in. I just did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Thank you for, thank you for watching out for that. I, cause that's not, um, not something I can keep track of when I'm looking at the screen. All right. So from the lingual view, so that looks like a canine from the facial view, we turn it around and it looks um, to look at the lingual view and the crown outline narrows towards the lingual. So some of the proximal surfaces are visible. Remember when we were looking at all the teeth and we were talking about those embrasure spaces? The embrasure spaces are larger on the lingual because the teeth generally are narrower on the lingual. So that means you can see some of the facial all right, so this is the first premolar. Okay, the top ones are the first premolar. And you can see some of the facial. Okay, here, some of the facial. You can see some of the facial from the lingual because the lingual is narrower than the facial. Let's turn it on its side. The mesial marginal ridges are more occlusal than the distal marginal ridges, except for the mandibular first premolar. So the ridges here, the ridges, are more occlusal. What that is saying, my friends, is that the teeth are fairly flat. The occlusal plane is fairly flat. Looking at the occlusal, they are wider facial lingually than they are mesial distally. Remember when we were looking at the lingual view, you could see some of those, uh, some of that facial view. It's wider on the facial than it is on the lingual, which means you've got larger embrasure spaces on the lingual because they're narrower. The occlusal table is bound by marginal and cusp ridges. This is a marginal ridge, marginal ridge. This is a cusp ridge where the facial and the occlusal surfaces meet. The proximal contacts are located buccal to the buccal lingual midline. Lingual embrasure spaces are bigger. All right, so this is the contact area. F is the contact area. Look where it is on the mesial and where it is on the distal. So you have a larger 
embrasure space on the lingual. I want you to think about the clinical aspects of that. If you are having problems reaching something from the facial because your instrument is too big, that face of the blade is too big, you can't get in on the facial, you have more room on the lingual, so you want to try and meet it. Okay, if you've got calculus interproximally, you can probably reach it better from the lingual than you can from the facial. Does that make sense? Because the facial embrasure space is larger, um, is smaller, I'm sorry, is smaller. The lingual embrasure space is larger. The teeth are narrower on the lingual. So that means the embrasure space is larger on the lingual. You can reach things on the lingual from the lingual better than you can reach things from the facial if you're trying to get directly interproximally. You've just got more space. Triangular ridges, we're still looking at the occlusal. Triangular ridges form, okay, transverse ridges if the buccal triangular ridge and the lingual triangular ridge form a straight line. So you've got a transverse ridge here. You've got a triangular ridge and another triangular ridge from the buccal and lingual, which forms a transverse ridge. And guess what, my friends? This needs to be marked on your tooth drawings. You have a triangular ridge. This is the three cusp type. You've got a triangular ridge here, a triangular ridge, and a triangular ridge. None of them form a transverse ridge for the three cusp type. How can you tell a maxillary from a mandibular premolar? Mandibular premolars have more of a noticeable lingual crown tilt than the maxillary, and the maxillary premolars have um, a nice straight up and down view. Whoops, that was me. Okay, so look at number five here. Okay, that's supposed to be a straight line. Okay, maxillary, you've got a flat occlusal table, okay, with the lingual just being a little bit shorter. You've got a straight up and down tooth versus the lingual tilt. Look at this. This is going, this is straight. And then you've got the lingual tilt with the occlusal table tilting lingually. The buccal cusp is much longer than the lingual cusp for a mandibular. And there's less buccal ridge prominent, prominence than the maxillary. All right, so when you're drawing your premolars, especially for the first premolar, I really want to see this lingual tilt. And I'll be looking to make sure that the first premolar looks nice and straight. We're still looking at the differences between maxillary and mandibular. All premolars have greater buccal lingual distance than the mesiodistal, so they're longer buccal lingually than they are mesial distally. But the mandibular premolar is closer to square. The maxillary premolar has a buccal lingual more obvious and greater than the mesial distal. You don't have to commit this to memory, but this is a really good slide for your drawings. I like the occlusals on this drawing. You have for the first premolar, and I can tell that this is the maxillary first premolar because it looks nice and square. You've got a prominent central groove versus the second, not so prominent. And this is that mesial marginal ridge that goes over the mesial 
the mesial groove that goes over the mesial marginal ridge. I'm sorry, I'm confusing myself here. Okay, and it goes up the mesial. This is the second premolar. It's not as defined and the grooves are a little bit narrower. The mandibular premolars, there are three different occlusal types. You've got your Y occlusal, your U occlusal, and your H occlusal. This is your three cusp type which is why we don't call them bicuspids. So by the time you internalize all of this information, you're going to know this. I promise you, you're gonna know this. Use or flag this picture though, because this is a really great occlusal for the maxillary especially. How can you tell a maxillary first premolar from a maxillary second premolar. What's the first thing you're gonna be looking for? Bifurcation, the first thing. It's the first thing I look for. Which one has two roots? That's going to tell me it's a first premolar. Now there could be an anomaly where it's not bifurcated, so you have to look at other things. The other thing I'd be looking for, okay, is take a look at the occlusal table here. The first premolar, the buccal is just a little bit longer than the lingual versus the second premolar, it's more flat because we're transitioning from a canine to a molar, okay? This is that transitional space. Remember that mesial marginal groove that goes over the mesial marginal ridge? This is the mesial marginal ridge here, and you've got that mesial marginal groove. Ms. D, I have a question. So that mesial marginal ridge, uh, it's showing on the book for the maxillary right second premolar. Should we just not do that? The second that premolar that? does not have a mesial marginal groove going over the mesial marginal ridge. Okay, so I'm just asking because like that's the picture showing on the book. I'm just going to scratch that out. Scratch that out. This mm -hmm. is, okay, this is what it should look like. Okay, thank you. And this, this is what it should look like up on top here. So maxillary first premolars. Evidence of calcification is 1.5 years. Enamel completion is five to six years before it erupts, the enamel is completed. The eruption occurs between 10 and 11 years, and then you add two years to that for the root completion. Now, which teeth generally erupt first, the mandibular or maxillary? Mandibular. Mandibular, all right. So keep that in mind. Maxillary first premolars have, a buck, have both buccal and lingual cusps, but that buccal cusp is usually one millimeter or more longer than the lingual cusp. It's not a flat occlusal table. Most maxillary first premolars have two roots, two pulp canals. When one root is present, two pulp canals are usually found. That was in our general characteristics chapter. All right, so this is from your book. And I don't like some of the things that are on this picture. So this is why it's important for you to listen to me during the lectures. The facial looks very much like a canine, doesn't it? I can see the bifurcation squeaking out here. The lingual is narrower than the facial. So this is the lingual root, and you can see the facial from that. The lingual cusp is narrower than the facial. 
this is a good occlusal view, but what I don't want to see is this mesial marginal groove. Okay, so this should not be in. This is the marginal ridge here, the mesial marginal ridge, and this is showing that mesial marginal groove going over the ridge. This is the facial and the lingual. This is the mesial marginal groove going over the mesial marginal ridge. When you're drawing your picture, I don't want to see this for the distal. This is otherwise, um, this facial is a good picture. I can see the little bulbous area here. This is the contact area. You can see there's a depression here and a root depression going all the way up the root. The crown for the first premolar is shorter and narrower than the maxillary canine, but it looks like the canine. You have a well-developed middle lobe. And sometimes you'll have little grooves here, developmental lines. You're not gonna have a mammal on, but you'll have little grooves there. The surface is convex. The tip of the cusp is distal to the midline. It's a long, straight mesial ridge with a shorter distal ridge. That is very similar to the canine. The distal border is straight. The mesial border is more concave. The mesial and distal contact areas are about the same. So the takeaway of this is the contact areas are about the same. Looks very much like a canine when you're looking the buckle view. Okay, the first premolars, look at this, it's sharp like a canine. The second are a little more rounded. Contact points, relatively even. Mesial is going to be longer than the distal. Ella is there. Okay, Ella got kicked out. She's coming back in. All right. From the lingual view, from first or second, you can see some of the buckle when you're looking at the lingual because the lingual is narrower. Are the embrasure spaces wider or narrower on the buckle surface? Narrower? that they're narrower on the buckle. Very good. The embrasure spaces are narrower on the buckle surface than the lingual. You've got nice wide embrasure spaces on the lingual because the lingual is narrower than the buckle. How many times have I said this? Okay. The lingual cusp we're just talking maxillary premolars, first or second. The lingual cusp is shorter than the buccal cusp, more so on the maxillary first premolar than on the second. So what that's saying is this first premolar here, because the uh, buccal looks so much like a canine, again, it's the one right behind the canine, this lingual cusp is going to be shorter. The second premolar, the lingual cusp is going to be a little bit longer and more flat because it's transitioning from the canine. So this would be the canine here. And this would be a molar, whoops, behind here. The lingual cusp is shorter than the facial cusp, more so on the maxillary first premolar. The tip of the lingual cusp is located slightly mesial to the midline. That is one of those trivia things that I'm not going to harp on, okay? It's a straight up and down tooth. 
and that's what I want you to know. You can see that uh, on this drawing here, excuse me, this, this is narrower. Misty? And the facial, yes. Uh, the Ella is waiting in the waiting room. Still? I thought I, I thought I let her in. No, thank no, you. I just got in. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The maxillary first premolar has a mesial marginal groove that exists extending from the mesial marginal ridge to the middle of the crown. This, my friends, is a characteristic you need to know about the maxillary first premolar. It's bifurcated. It has a mesial marginal groove extending over the mesial marginal ridge. The buccal and lingual cusp are centered over the root. It's a straight up and down cusp. It has a mesial depression apical to the contact area that oftentimes will go all the way up the root. So those of you that love to shade are going to be shading this. Those of you that don't love to shade, guess what? You're just gonna draw this and label this as a mesial developmental depression. Both of them are okay. I'm good with both of them. I'm not a shader. It does not, it does not um, calm me to be able to shade. That developmental depression is located cervically to the mesial contact area, so it's closer to the CEJ. The facial and lingual outline is convex. The facial crest of curvature is located in the cervical third of the crown. The lingual crest of curvature is located in the middle third of the crown. Unlike your anterior teeth, where it's cervical on the facial and cervical on the lingual. The curvature of the cervical line is greater on the mesial surface than on the distal surface. So, Alexis, is this different than any other tooth when it comes to the cervical line? It's the same. Yep. The mesial is always greater. Sometimes you can't see it, but it's always greater. Now we're turning the tooth around. Let's take a look at the distal. It's similar to the mesial view, except there is no developmental depression. There's usually no groove, but it's not as deep as the mesial marginal groove if it exists. So this is the here, this is, okay, that's the distal. This is your contact area. There is no groove going over the marginal ridge. And guess what? You don't have that mesial depression, developmental depression, because it's called a mesial developmental depression. There's no distal. So the cervical line is less curved on the distal than it is on the mesial. The crown appears more rounded and smooth. Both buccal and lingual cusps are, cusp tips are centered over the root. So again, it is a straight up and down tooth. That's supposed to be a straight line. Maxillary premolars from the occlusal view. Again, this is from a different textbook, but I like it because look at this. I know that this is the first premolar. I know it because it's got a strong uh, central groove. This is the mesial marginal ridge with a developmental groove going over the mesial marginal ridge. The second premolar does not. first premolar is likely to be larger than the second premolar. 
Again, I really like the occlusal on this particular textbook. Hint, hint. Unlike your grand, um, you can see that there is no groove going over this distal marginal ridge. No groove um, going Ms. over. D? Yes. So you said that um, earlier on the, pre the previous slide, you said that the right uh, maxillary first premolar also had the transverse uh, ridge. Is that correct? But it's not showing here. This is a transverse ridge. But we have to mark it in the occlusion. So, yeah, so what you're going to do on your tooth drawings is, is probably something like this, and you'll, and you'll be writing transverse here. Okay. Trans. Okay, and there's going to be one here, too, another transverse ridge, because you've got a triangular ridge and okay. another triangular ridge. And Ms. D, you, you also want us to specifically label the triangular ridges. In, on the sheet, it says transverse oblique ridges when present. Um, I don't need, tri every cusp is going to have a triangular ridge, so I don't need them. But what I need you to do is to be able to identify a transverse ridge versus a okay. oblique ridge, because that is what, if you get a board question, that is what the board question is going to be on. And okay. um, I need you to just have this permanently imprinted in okay. your brain, what a transverse ridge is. So still follow the sheet that Absolutely. you in terms of what to label, because you had also mentioned just a little bit ago about the mesial developmental depression. I'm just curious. Um, you don't need to label that. I want to see it, though. Oh, you want to see it. Okay, good. Identifying factor okay. in that particular tooth. I got it. Thank you. Okay, the mesial marginal groove going over the mesial marginal ridge, that mesial depression that goes up the root, and the bifurcation. Those are the three things to take away from um, your first premolar. Got it. So Thanks. first versus second, the central groove of the maxillary first premolar is longer than that of the second. The maxillary second premolar has more supplemental grooves than the first. Okay, this is those general characteristics. Both maxillary premolars have noticeable greater dimension, facial lingually than mesial distally. So it's facial lingually versus mesial distally. The buccal ridge is more prominent on the maxillary first premolar. This is that buccal ridge. The maxillary first premolar outline is more asymmetrical than the second. These are those nitty gritty facts. Some of you are going to remember this, some of you aren't. This is not the type of detail I'm going to be asking you. For your first premolar on the occlusal, the crown is wider buck on the buccal surface than it is on the lingual. We've said that, as most teeth are. You've got two well-developed cusps. They're pointed. The facial cusp is larger and longer. It looks very much like the canine. Each cusp has four ridges, and each ridge is named according to its location. Got a facial ridge, a link ridge, a distal ridge, and a mesial ridge. I don't like this picture as much, but this is what a lot of your tooth drawings are going to look like, and that's fine because what this does is it really accentuates that groove. And each is labeled according to its location. Look at this, the distal lingual triangular groove. This is the facial or the buccal. This is the lingual. This is the distal. So it's the distal lingual triangular groove. So once you know the terminology, you can pretty much guess everything else. So the ridges that project from the cusp tips to the central groove of the occlusal surface are called triangular ridges. 
when two triangular ridges join, they become a transverse ridge. And they're labeled mesiobuccal, mesiolingual, distolingual, distobuccal. Okay, so you're dividing the tooth up. So this is the buccal, this is the buccal, and the lingual, and the mesial, and the distal, and those ridges. This is a ridge here. And this is a ridge. This is the mesiolingual ridge. This is the mesiobuccal ridge, the distobuccal ridge. Those ridges form the cusp tip. So for the maxillary first premolar, let's take a look at the roots. They're usually bifurcated. Number one thing to look at. Oh, it's bifurcated. That's my first, uh, my first choice. And then you start looking at other aspects of the tooth to see if it's not an anomaly of another tooth. The buccal root is longer and larger than the lingual. If it's a single root form, there's usually two canals with a distinct groove in the middle of the root. So it looks like it's a bifurcation wannabe, but it just didn't completely form. Is this the mesial or the distal of the tooth here? Mesial? It's the mesial. And when you're using your instruments, you have to remember that because you're going to have to get that toe of the curette, that rounded toe, to get in here from both the buccal and the lingual to make sure that you are reaching everything that you need to reach. So is this the, let me see here, is this the facial or the lingual here? Or is this the facial? Which one's the facial? Top or bottom? Top. Top. Why are you choosing top? It's broader. It's broader, exactly. And the lingual is narrower. Very good. So when you're comparing the first premolars to the canines, okay, it's got a greater facial lingual measurement in relation to the distal, um, mesial distal measurement, the mesial and distal contact areas are broader and they're nearly equal. The mesial and distal curvature of the cervical line is less. This is comparing it to the anterior teeth, okay? Because the tooth is getting a little broader from facial to lingual, the CEJ is also straightening out a little bit. First premolars. Mesial and distal is just uh, the contact areas are cervical to the junction of the occlusal and middle thirds. The height of contour are pretty much the same. All right, as far as the, the size of them, but look, the facial contour is in the cervical third. The lingual height of contour is in the middle third. And we've discussed that because it's the cervical third um, for the anterior teeth on the lingual. You usually have bifurcated roots with a longitudinal groove separating them. The mesial surface shows a developmental fossa. The mesial marginal groove crosses a mesial marginal ridge and extends onto the mesial surface. The facial cusp is wider and longer than the lingual cusp and the mesial ridge of the facial cusp may have a slight concavity. So aside from this bottom one, 
here. I don't expect you to know that, but the first one, two, three, four are all identifying factors or characteristics of a maxillary first premolar. Mesial marginal groove is found most often on the mesial marginal ridge of the maxillary first premolar. It's not as common on the other maxillary premolar ridges. So for the second premolars, evidence of calcification is two years. Enamel completed, six to seven years. Eruption, 10 to 12. Root completion is two years beyond that, 12 to 14. Second premolars oftentimes uh, resemble the maxillary first premolars, except they vary individually more than the maxillary first premolars. The crown is less angular and more rounded, so it doesn't, it's not as pointed like a canine is pointed. It's a little more rounded. The roots is usually longer, but one root is present and it's usually not bifurcated, usually not. They're showing, this is from your text, all right? A, I like, B, I like, C, I don't like, D, I don't like, and E, I don't like. I don't want this or that. Okay, are you getting what I'm looking at? I don't want to see a mesial marginal groove and a distal marginal groove. This artist's rendition has them. Do you see them occasionally? Yes, but you oftentimes don't. You, see, you don't see them more than you see them. And again, I want your drawings to depict what is typically seen on this tooth class type. For the second premolars, the buccal cusp is not as long as it is on the first premolar. Our teeth are getting shorter. The crowns are getting shorter. They're less pointed. They have the same general markings, but not as well defined. The lingual cusp is almost the same length as the buccal cusp. Remember on the maxillary first premolar, the lingual cusp is a little bit shorter. And this is showing you that the lingual cusp is off center just a little bit. For second premolars on the mesial aspect, the buccal and lingual cusps, again, are nearly the same length. Nearly the same length. The crown surface is convex. You can see a shallow developmental groove on a single root form. From the distal aspect, first and second, Comparing the two, the first and second premolars are about the same, except the buccal and lingual cusps on the second premolar are almost equal in length. Again, we're transitioning from the canine, from the first premolar to a molar in the second premolar. The occlusal outline is more rounded than the first premolar. It's more ovoid. What I don't want to see with this picture is I want this groove to stop here and I want this groove to stop here. Otherwise, it looks like the first premolar. And you've got a transverse ridge. The lingual cusp is almost as wide as the buccal cusp. It's more of a square tooth. The grooves are shorter in the second premolar as they are in general characteristics. The first of a class type is going to have very well-defined grooves. The second of that class type is going to have less defined grooves, shallower grooves, more grooves, and the third of a class type like your third molar is going to be even more wrinkly. 
there's usually one single root with one root canal. You can see bifurcated second premolars, but it's not very common. Pulp cavity and bifurcated uh, roots. You've got two, you can have two apical foramina present because you've got two openings. Second premolar. It doesn't have that mesial marginal groove. Remember on the first premolar, it was really concave there. For the contact areas, it's just cervical to the junction of the occlusal and middle thirds. You've got the height of contour in the cervical third for the facial and in the middle third for the lingual. You need to know that. Identifying characteristics. There's usually two root canals. I'm not gonna ask you that. The board's not gonna ask you that. The buccal and lingual cusp are nearly equal in length. Okay, it's a very uh, flat tooth compared to the first premolar. The buccal cusp is shorter than the first premolar because the height from the CEJ to the occlusal is shorter. We're getting into shorter teeth versus the long canine. The occlusal is less angular and more rounded on the maxillary second than it is on the first. And the occlusal developmental grooves are shorter, shallower, and more irregular than on the first premolar. So again, these are fitting the general characteristics of teeth. So how are we doing? Medium. <laughs> okay. Agreed. <laughs> All right. This is, um, this really is, um, these are nice teeth to know about because they're all the first premolar versus the second premolar on the maxillary, very different. Bifurcation, mesial marginal groove going over the mesial marginal ridge, that developmental depression on the mesial that goes all the way up the root, first premolar versus second premolar. And we're going to find out that it's um, there are uh, identifying characteristics on the mandibular arch as well. But that, my friends, is after the break. And let's come back at 10 20 and we will continue Miss D. I don't think she's here. Okay. There, I've unmuted myself. Oh, uh, Leslie said she got kicked out and could you let her back in? And so did Mary. Uh, I don't see. Let me see. It says we have 31, so I don't, I, I, maybe they're so in. So everybody, sh yeah, everybody should be here. I've been letting some people in. I apologize for not muting, unmuting myself. No, you're fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at the mandibular premolars from the buccal view. We are more than halfway done, my friends. Now, um, this is the right here, and this is the uh, first premolar, and this is the second premolar. So 
the first premolar mimics the canine with function and look. So you can see that this is a first premolar versus a second premolar. As you move more distally, the CEJ, even though it curves more on the mesial, but the CEJ on the facial and lingual, okay, curves less, okay, the more posterior you go. So comparing the two, this has a slightly straighter CEJ on the second than it does on the first. Look at where this mesial or this groove is here, developmental groove, okay? They're on different spots. If a tooth is going to curve, if a root is going to curve, it's going to curve in which direction? Distally. It's going to curve towards the distal. So you want to take a look. Okay, at that. Can everybody hear me? Alexis, can you hear me? Okay. Alexis is having issues, evidently. So having said that, if a root is going to curve, it's going to curve slightly towards the distal. So this would be the mesial. The mandibular first premolar is longer than the second premolar. The buccal cusp of the mandibular first premolar is sharper than that of the second. It's sharper, okay? And the cusp notches are more common on the mesial of the first and distal of the second. So if there's a cusp notch, this is a notch here, and this is a notch. It's more common on the mesial of the first and distal of the second. To confuse issues even more, okay, the buccal ridge depressions on either side of the buccal ridge when present are likely to be deeper on the mesial than that of the uh, first premolar than that of the second premolar. So what this is showing you is the first premolar is on the mesial, the second premolar is on the distal. Do you have to draw that? No, unless you want to make this one of those identifying characteristics, you can. The CEJ is more curved on the mandibular first premolar than it is on the second. So for the mandibular first premolars, we've got evidence of calcification at two years, enamel completion at five to six years, eruption 10 to 12, and root completion 12 to 13. So these premolars are all being formed at about the same time and erupting at about the same time. Mandibular first premolars are smaller than the mandibular second premolars. And that usually is not the case. They develop from four lobes, three facial lobes form one large buccal cusp and the single lingual lobe forms the lingual cusp. Now this is an identifiable characteristic. The lingual cusp on the mandibular first premolar does not occlude with any maxillary teeth and it is considered a functional or non-functional. The mandibular first premolar has an afunctional or non-functional lingual cusp. Mandibular first premolar, remember we also talked about that decidedly lingual tilt. The occlusal table is not flat. And then this is that afunctional lingual cusp. Misty, do the um, grooves not go, to, go over the ridges on mandibular either normally? Correct. 
So C is not correct as far as what you now, want to Now, uh, it, it will on the distal more so than on the mesial. Let's put it that way. Okay. Okay, because this is the distal here. The mesial is just a little bit longer. Okay. So it's, uh, you've got, oh, I, I said this wrong. The distal occlusal ridge is longer than the mesial occlusal ridge. It's got a sharp point. The mesial cusp ridge is shorter than the distal cusp ridge. That's what I was trying to say. Contact areas are about the same. The teeth are more convex than the maxillary premolar. The roots are shorter than the mandibular canine. Remember the mandibular canine has the longest root in the mandibular arch. The developmental depressions can be seen, but usually don't have lines. So we've got a much longer buccal cusp than we do on the lingual cusp. It's broader on the facial, and that lingual cusp is small, sometimes, okay, hardly existent at all. Okay, so this is the mesial here. This is the distal. This is the non-functional cusp. That's a pretty good picture. There's that lingual tilt. The buccal cusp centers directly over the root. The tip of the lingual cusp is centered lingually. So what this is saying is this is the occlusal here. So the buccal cusp is more centered, but there is a lingual tilt. Crest of curvatures for the facial or the buccal, it's in the cervical third. And on the lingual, it is in the middle third. Same with the maxillary premolars. The mesiolingual developmental groove between the mesio uh, buccal and lingual lobes can be present. So this would be the distal marginal groove that is present sometimes. The root has more con Vexity on the distal than it does on the mesial, and their shallow developmental depressions are often found. Shallow developmental depressions. So for the first premolar, there can be a lot of variation. The crowns uh, are going to be very pointed on the facial or the buccal, not so much on the lingual. You're going to have this afunctional lingual cusp, which is very small. Triangular ridges, okay, are on each cusp with a very small lingual triangular ridge because you've got that afunctional cusp. Mesial and distal fossa oftentimes has a pit involved. They may have a transverse ridge. Premolars. The root tapers at the apex. If it bends, there's going to be a bend towards the distal. They're usually single rooted. Pulp horns, pulp cavities, I don't need you to know that. But look at the shape of the root. Again, you need to remember B because that is what you're going to be instrumenting subgingively. You're not going to be able to see that. 
you need to be feeling that. know how to convert everything. For your first premolars, height of contour, cervical third for the facial as it is in all teeth, and it's in the middle third on the lingual as it is for posterior teeth. You've got an afunctional or non-occluding lingual cusp on the first premolar, okay? Afunctional is the term I use. I've seen non-occluding as well, so be familiar with both terms. The occlusal surface slopes sharply to the lingual. So when you're seeing an interproximal or a mesial or distal, that's the root. And then the crown is going to be like that. Second premolars. After the first premolar. The second premolar is larger than the mandibular first premolar, and this is something different. Usually the first of a class type, let's say incisors, the central incisor is larger than the lateral incisor. Well, not so with premolars. The lingual cusp of the second premolar are more developed and both have marginal ridges that are higher. So remember that first premolar has that afunctional um, lingual cusp. You're not going to see that with the mandibular second premolars, All right? So instead of being non-functional, look at the cusp size here, okay? You've got a larger lingual cusp. It's taller. This is the three cusped type. There are three and two cusp types of second premolars. They usually have a single root. Bifurcation is rare. The three cusp form resembles mandibular molars in that you've got two lingual cusps with two developmental lobes. You've got two pole horns. You've got a functional lingual cusps. Now this is not, uh, this is what the book says but the boards want you to know that the mandibular first premolar has an afunctional or non-occluding cusp. This book is saying that all the lingual cusps are afunctional. The higher, it's higher on the mesial than it is on the distal. So it's higher on the mesial than it is on the distal. The mesial and distal contact areas are broad. The root is wider mesiodistally than the first premolar, and it's larger, but the apex is a little more blunt. It's not as pointy. For the second premolar on the lingual, there's a lot of variation because you don't know if it's a two cusp or a three cusp. So this is one, two, three. The mesial is usually higher than the distal. The mesial is usually larger than the distal. So not knowing which is the mesial and which is the distal by knowing those general characteristics, I would be able to say that uh, the left is the mesial. So comparing the first and the second, the lingual lobes are more developed on the second premolar. There are two or three lobes or two or three cusp types. In the three cusp form, the mesial lingual and distal lingual cusp are present. You've got two lingual cusps. The mesial lingual is going to be larger and longer than the distal. And it's divided by a groove. In the two cusp type, the lingual lobe is 
higher than that of the mandibular first premolar because that mandibular first premolar has that distinctive a functional cusp and there's no groove on the lingual lobe. Second premolar, you've got a higher lingual cusp than you do on the first premolar, and it's not quite as lingual tilted. The first premolar would have a definite tilt, and that occlusal would tilt towards the lingual. And uh, the marginal ridge is at right angles to the long axis of the tooth. So we've got the long axis of the tooth and the marginal ridge. So it's more flat on the occlusal table. So that's what that means. This is the occlusal. Versus on the first premolar, remember you've got that lingual tilt. It's not perpendicular. From the distal, the occlusal surface can be seen because the distal marginal ridge is lower. Okay, so this is the distal. You can see the mesial here, okay, because this is lower than the mesial. With each cusp, you have a triangular ridge, whether it's two cusp pipe or three cusp pipe, there's a triangular ridge on each cusp. Only mandibular second premolars with two lingual cusps have a lingual groove separating them. Okay, lingual grooves. So this is one, two, three. First premolar versus second premolar. Oh, Ms. D, did you say there's no, um, okay, one second. There's no mesial or this so marginal ridge on this? There is on the first premolar, you can have a distal marginal ridge, and that's what this mm -hmm. is here. Mm -hmm. But not on the second one. Not on the second. Okay, thank you. You have pits. The central pit is most likely to be present. The pit. This is a mesial occlusal pit, a central pit, and a distal. Pit. Distal pit, mesial pit. Do they warrant sealants? Absolutely. A very shapely tooth. I don't like this picture because I don't want to see that and I don't necessarily want to see that. Three cusp type with a Y occlusal pattern. Two cusp type compared to a three cusp type. Two cusp type, there's no central pit usually. This is the two cusp type, and, I, and you've got a mesial and a distal pit here and a central groove. This is really accentuating all those little wrinkles. Three cusp type is a Y pattern. The two cusp type, you can have a U or an H pattern. Y, U, and an H. The three cusp type is more square outline 
okay, because you've got a larger lingual than you do on uh, the facial. And this is an exception to the rule. Okay, remember we say that the lingual is always narrower, except for the three cusped type of second premolar, mandibular second premolar, because it's got two lingual cusps. Got the U, H, and Y. This is a better picture from a different textbook. You can see that um, they don't have any of these ridges going over the marginal ridge. This is the marginal ridge and the marginal ridge. And they don't have grooves going over. The lingual half, uh, it can be wider uh, if you have a three cusp type. Remember, we always said, you know, the characteristic is that the lingual is narrower than the facial, except for the three cusp type. That's the exception. We used to call these snake eyes. And you'll see either sealants placed in here, hopefully over amalgams or composites. Hopefully we're getting the um, patients in the chair to have these sealed before decay can happen, but they're called snake eyes. On the mandibular first premolar, you have that afunctional lingual cusp. Triangular ridges. If you have a cusp, you've got a triangular ridge. The three different groove patterns. U, H, or Y. Which ones do you have? For the second premolars, for the roots, okay, it's similar to the first premolar, larger, wider, buccolingually. The distal surface of both premolars are more likely to have a longitudinal depression. In the middle third, the mesial surface is less, less likely to have a longitudinal depression. Now, with that, this goes along with what we learned in the characteristics of roots. If there's going to be a root depression, it's usually more prominent on the distal than it is on the mesial. That's what it said in the beginning of the book. All this is saying is that this is going along with the norm. Pulp cavities, it's usually a single root canal, have a tendency to uh, have divided root canals more so than the first premolar on the second premolar. The different numbering systems. Why does it say number of developmental lobes four or five? Because since it's more posterior, are there more anomalies? Could be. Okay, this has to do with whether it's a two or three cusps premolar. Remember, three, three buccal cusps are going to be, uh, three buccal lobes are going to form the buccal, uh, three lobes. And then if you've got the three cusp type, you're going to be developing some five lobes. If you have the two cusped type, you're gonna be developing from four lobes. So it all depends on whether or not you have a three cusped premolar. So no matter what, you always have three facial and then either two or three. Yep. Three facial, one lingual. Okay. 
unless, yeah, unless, okay, if you've got two lingual cusps, you're developing from two lingual, from two different lobes. Height of contour, the facial is in the cervical third as it is with all teeth. And the lingual height of contour is in the middle third as it is with all posterior teeth. Second premolar, some identifying characteristics. There is more variation in any tooth except the third molars. Now this is going to be that Ooh, the book says it here, one thing, and the book says it there, and another thing. Uh, remember, the maxillary lateral incisors can have a lot of variation, too. But uh, on, in general, there's more variation. You've got your third molars, then the second mandibular, second premolars, and then the maxillary laterals. Usually has a single root. You can have two or three cusps. You have variation in the occlusal pattern. The two cusp type can have a U or an H pattern and the three cusp will have that Y pattern. First versus second. All right, this is, uh, this, I'm sorry, these are all second, but this is the H. The right maxillary first premolar, look, this is an H, but look at this, it has that mesial marginal groove going over the mesial marginal ridge. You have an A functional cusp. for the mandibular first premolar, then these are mandibular second premolars. Can anybody see what's wrong with this picture? What's so cool, guys, is you're going to be able to, um, to point this out once you see teeth after teeth after teeth and, and, and everything. It's just going to stand out, like, just stand out. I gave you a hint. Um, looks rotated. Exactly. It, this is completely rotated 180 degrees. This is the facial, or it was developed as the facial cusp, and this is the lingual cusp. Completely rotated. Now, would an orthodontist rotate that tooth around? Absolutely not. Look at this. This is that mesial marginal groove going over the mesial marginal ridge. You don't have it on the distal. You've got a nice transverse ridge here, another transverse ridge here. When we get into molars, you're going to have an oblique ridge. What's the first thing you say? Are you looking at developing third molars? Tongue rod? What's that? Don't know. Supernumerary tooth maybe?
This is why spacing is so important. If children lose teeth too early, there's that mesial drift phenomenon, and sometimes the teeth aren't going to have enough space to come in. So this is, this can be an impacted premolar. This is the six-year molar. That's the number six. All right, this is the 12-year molar, the second molar. Your roots are almost completely formed. So how old do you think this person is? Is it a teenager on the younger or adult side of things? Looks like they're younger because the 12 year old molars haven't erupted yet. Correct, 12, 12 year old molars, the second molars haven't erupted. The first molars are almost complete and they erupt about two years or they complete about two years after eruption. So if they're called our quote unquote six year molar, then they develop it, you know, if they erupted at six, then you add two years to that, and then you've got your eight. So this would be an eight or a nine-year-old. Premolars, the roots, remember when the teeth first erupt, the roots are not complete. And we're not going to do this case study, but uh, why has this patient retained his primary molar? Okay, so this is, look at, this is a mandibular canine. Remember that notch we were talking about? It's that little notch here. This is a permanent molar, very old permanent molar, and this is a premolar. I'm sorry, it's a, a baby molar, a deciduous molar with a really ugly amalgam restoration there. So what is, uh, why does that, patients still have a premolar to maintain a space or, um, to maintain a space yes now this is an older person that really shouldn't have this tooth still in it so what probably happened is they didn't have a permanent tooth underneath it so what we do is if we know that through bite wings and radiographs we will keep this baby tooth in there this deciduous tooth in there to maintain space until the tooth wants to give out and then we'll place an implant in. So my best friend's daughter who just turned 38 just lost her tooth and she's getting an implant. So she was able to hang on to it for 38 years. And before that we didn't have any other options but to put a partial or a bridge in when that tooth was lost. Okay, so that is everything you wanted to know about premolars and more. What questions do you have, my friends? Be nice to us on this test. <laughs> I try to be nice on all the tests. I listen. <laughs> I just think that this test is going to have the most detail because it is, it's essentially all the minute details of every tooth in our mouth. Yes, that's why I want you to be drawing them and why I'm emphasizing. This has that mesial marginal groove going over the mesial uh, marginal ridge. Which tooth is that? It's this one here. It's very indicative of that. So what I'd like you to do is read the chapter, review these PowerPoints, or listen to the lecture again, because I did emphasize what I want you to know, not only for the test, but what I want you to know for the drawing. Ms. D, um, on the previous slide, so when the roots um, uh, develop over time, do they fuse together? Uh, the that, like there was a panoramic that you showed us that has a impacted premolar. Oh, as I'm making everybody dizzy. Um, it wasn't that far. Premolar. What are you? What are you asking again? So when you show us that uh, picture, it looks like that impacted premolar has two roots. 
um, and it's the lower one, uh, the one after the safety picture. Yes, right here. You say this could be impacted premolar, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, it looks like so okay. this is not this is not a two root. What this is not a two rooted tooth. What this is? Yeah, is that's why I'm asking. A tooth uh -huh. that has not finished completion yet. So when this completes, this root is going to be fused like that when it uh, closes at the apex. Thank you. Okay, so this com this is completely opened right now, just like this canine is eventually going to close. Any other questions? All right, keep an eye this weekend on emails. Um, I'll be working tomorrow on, on trying to complete the test that's going to be on Tuesday and confirming things and that type of stuff. So um, I can't do anything this afternoon because I have to run to clinic, but I will, I promise you, we're gonna get caught up, guys. Uh, Misty, I have a quick question. So. Yeah. For Garrick, it's usually like the same chapters that we've been reading since the last uh, exam, right? Just if I have time to go over that. For like Garrick, the, yes. You, I know there's going to be scalars. I know there's going to be uh, curettes. Area specific, probably not. Okay, thank you. Okay, because you really haven't had an opportunity to see them in action. We've demonstrated on some and some we haven't. So I'm going to try and leave them off until the next one. Uh, Misty, I know you said that you haven't started the exams question yet, but like um, just an idea of what chapters on Wilkins, is it gonna be like 17, 19, 20, 21? It's gonna be the ones that you were responsible for from the last exam. Okay, so we had 20, I guess last week and on Wilkins we had 19 and 15. You know what and I apologize but this is a new edition and I don't have they've changed the numbers of the chapters so um, it's I mean, 19 and 17 for this week so if it's yeah. just what we didn't do last time it's just 2017 and 19. Okay. Oh okay thank you. Okay, that makes sense. But I'll let you know, I promise. Sign up for tutoring. Lisa was busy yesterday with uh, in clinic. I love seeing that she is, she's, she's just a bomb when it comes to being able to uh, work with you in clinic. So I'm glad that you have her. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out. And I will talk to everybody later. Thank you, Misty. Thank you, bye. Thank you, Misty.